for a long time, people in the human rights community and sort of in the media have used the analogy of an open air prison to describe Gaza. If you think about it for a minute, I have no idea what an open air prison is. Uh, I don't think it's a thing yes. that exists. And, and the thing about metaphors is that they have to call up a or or analogies. They have to call up something that we can imagine. Uh, and when I thought about what Gaza really is, Gaza under siege, so Gaza before October 7th, uh, it is most like a ghetto. There are significant differences, and I'm not saying that there aren't. But the closest analogy that we have to Gaza, which is an isolated, immiserated, hyper-densely populated uh, space that is controlled by the people who built the fence, but isn't governed by them, but is actually governed by a force that is in many key ways enabled by the people who built the fence. Uh, so the reason that I think it's important to use the, uh, the word ghetto is because it gives us language for what is happening now, which is that the ghetto is being liquidated. And the reason I think that's important is because after the Holocaust, humanity said, never again. Well, in order to make never again not an empty slogan, not a magic spell, but an actual political project, we have to have tools for recognizing when something like that is happening so that it actually can yeah. ha not happen again. And I think something like that is happening in Gaza, or at least I'm making the argument that there's good reason to think that something like that is, is happening in Gaza. 